Welcome everybody. This is Martin Raybarts, director of Fana Marama New Zealand International Film Festival. We are live tonight following the online premiere of Instinct by director Helena Rhein, and we are so incredibly lucky to have not just Helena joining her is Carice von Houten, who is one of the co-creators of the film and also the lead actress. So You'll know her from the film many of you just watched, or some of you may have seen it at the Wellington Film Society screening here at the beautiful Embassy Theatre. So, Carice, Helena, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Good Hi. to see you. <laughs> so happy to see you, actually. It's like, it's, I was just, when I was thinking, like, I'm going to be talking to you tonight, um, I was starting to feel a little homesick for Amsterdam. Yes. Um, and for you guys, um, it's so, so really happy that you could join us. Thank you both so much. Um, Thank you, you know, for having this, us. This was a film that we, I, I was involved in world premiering this film in my former job in the, in the Netherlands, um, in Locarno Film Festival last year, where it won the Variety Piazza Grande Award. Yay. Yay. <laughs> and then went on to Toronto. And then it also was the Dutch um, foreign language international film contender for the Oscars. So you have had, both of you have had quite a year with this particular film. Um, what was some of the, what was the highlight of that year? The thing that, that you most remember about bringing this film out into the world, because Helena, it's your first film as a, as a writer, director. Uh, Carice, yours as the first time you're producing with one of your, your dear old friends. So what was the, what was the, most, what was something that thrilled you along the way? Oh, I mean, apart from, from the shooting itself. Yeah. Um, I think we were really, when we, we heard that we were going to Locarno, I think that was a great moment because then we felt like, oh, someone's, someone's really getting uh, what we made, what we tried to make. And what, um, it sort of started from there. What, was there some doubt that people might not get it? Because we all know, and we've, you know, many people who are listening now have watched it, that it's a really complex film. But did you have doubts along the way that maybe people wouldn't get it? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's very controversial, it's, even though it's based on a true story and especially uh, in the Me Too times and, uh, you know, the new um, feminist wave, I think because we, uh, Chris and I, want to explore, uh, uh, you know, female behavior and female driven stories in all its complexity and not just you know, polarize this whole discussion and just portraying strong women. So I think this film is very provocative and, and sometimes people, yeah, couldn't watch it or didn't, or, or thought, you know, it, it didn't resonate with them at all. So we were very anxious, like, is anyone going to understand <laughs> what we're trying to say? And then these women of Locarno, you know, as you know, because you were yeah. so, involved, you played a big part in that whole process. They called us and they were like, and they not only invited us to the festival, but also gave us a huge, sort of stage in the Grande Piazza, which is like the mainstream, bigger, you know, audience films. Absolutely, and I thought, oh, yeah. It's yeah. Yeah, I really love that Lucano considered your film mainstream, like an audience <laughs> film, um, because, mm -hmm. you know, even we who know and love it, um, I understand that that it, it, it might be confronting, it might be difficult. And, and I'm sure that, that there will be people who are, um, you know, have questions about it as well as 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 you know. Um, I just what what I've got a question though. What made you choose this kind of material as your first film? Because you formed a company called Man Up together. Um, you know, Carice, you were working at the time on Game of Thrones, so you're really busy on you know the world's biggest television series. Um, Helena, you were busy with. Um, Eva von Hover and the Tonel Group Amsterdam International Theatre Amsterdam, which is you know, one of the most remarkable theatre companies in the world. 
um, traveling, you know, Tokyo, Paris, New York, London, um, working on, you know, some of the great classics and reinventing them from the ground up. What was it that in both of your, in, you know, busy lives, one particularly in theater, the other in this, you know, in the Game of Thrones world that thought, let's make this film rather than, you know, rather than any other one. What was it that triggered this film? Well, I think me coming from the stage and working with Ifo, all these big classical plays are about sexuality, power, right. you know, all these bigger themes, of course, that were addressed by all these huge playwrights like Shakespeare, O'Neill, Chekhov, Ibsen. And I felt like after 20 years playing all these um, women, like from Hedda Gabler to The Taming of the Shrew, right. I felt I wanted to tell this similar story about sexuality and power and, and, and male and female, but in, if through a female gaze, you know, and through my own uh, experience. And, 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 and so that's why we chose this uh, story that actually happened. Yeah. Uh, and we, we took it as a vessel to express much deeper and complexer and abstract feelings yeah. that we both have in life and that we experience as women. And of course, it's a big exaggeration, but you can compare it to any destructive behavior that you might have, you know, that uh -huh. you know is bad right. to, Hey, you're going to smoke a cigarette even though you shouldn't, or you're going to not go to the gym even though you should. And of course, maybe there's nothing compared to falling in love with a psychopath, but we all know these behaviors that are so destructive. Well, yeah, they're compulsive and, behaviors, so I think they are comparable. Yeah, like toxic, toxic relationships. And also it's a story, I think, for me about a vulnerability and about a fear of uh, in intimacy. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. I mean, the, the complexity of, of, of your character, Carice, is... is going to become legendary. I think she, she's she's a marvelous character. Um, she's difficult to like at times. She's difficult to understand. What was it that, that helped you key into her, for you to understand her, because you you were the person about to play her? Um, well, <laughs> weirdly enough, I don't find it very difficult to understand That's her. And I know, you know, I, I know how, how neurotic I can be myself, or I, I, I mean, I can... I can pull from personal um, experiences. So, yeah. I mean, of course, I struggled with certain certain decisions that she takes. But yeah, and and and, and also, I, I really enjoyed uh, the challenge of portraying someone who isn't per se immediately very sympathetic, but mm -hmm. but try to lure the audience in and try to get them mm. uh, at least feel with you. And experience to, to, to live inside her skin, at least, even though she, it yeah. might be complicated skin. Yeah. Yeah. And also, it's and to not immediately uh, throw people, you know, uh, a, a, an easy, an easy dinner. Yeah, exactly. Because we're, there's um, so many easy dinners out there, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can go to McDonald's anytime. Yeah. Know? I've got. I've had a question come in actually. Um, it's from Sarah on YouTube. Um, it's two parts of the question. What did you write this before you founded Man Up? And the second part of it relates to the character, actually. Is it harder to get funding for this kind of darker female perspective and content? And how did you fund it? Um, yeah, so we first, uh, we wrote, the first thing we did together, apart from acting together, which we did in the beginning of our careers a couple of times, right. uh, and we were best friends anyhow. So the first thing we did together, just for fun, it was writing an entire style book so it was a very strange uh, uh, venture that we did, but it was great. It was a big hit in Holland, but it was more a joke, but it, it, it really uh, it was a great experience for us as far as working together. That was the right. first time that we really created something from zero. And even though it was light and joke, and then we thought maybe we should have this company, maybe we should start to create film and TV. And so we really started out by creating a TV show about prostitution, mm -hmm. but that took a long time to get financed because 10 episodes and co-productions. And so we're finally now in post-production with that. Right. But so in Time we got a little bit bored by how long everything took and that's that when we created instinct um and uh, to answer your question about getting funding for these kind of stories i think we started all of this before me too and i have to say that because of me too and the whole movement that then uh, came about it became much easier but in the beginning we did encounter a lot of prejudice against two actresses you know wanting to you know and, and a lot of people were like not taking us seriously and right. thinking that you know we were just vain and just wanted to be you wow. know yeah. and they were very surprised once they found out that we actually wanted to create these very dark stories non-pleasing stories so it right. took us some time eh, for, for people to to really yeah to really take us seriously <laughs> but now now they do now, now they do <laughs> step back people um <laughs> when you when, 
just, just, I'm going to stick with you for, for a minute, Helena. When you were coming up, you know, say, let's produce, let's direct, let's make work ourselves, let's take control, we'll hold the reins as women. Um, yeah. But you'd never actually directed a film before. I know you've worked in theatre and, you're, you're, and, and the kind of theatre you work in is very collaborative. What were the, the biggest steps you needed to take to move from being on stage, I guess, from in front of the camera to behind the camera? Um, well, I think I did read a lot of books about uh, uh, directing movies because, of course, I saw mainly... I, I did some film, you know, in my career, but I saw mainly theatre directors at work. Mm. And so I thought I needed to learn a lot about just the techniques of film and how all of that worked. But I do think as an actress, uh, especially, uh, we are both very blessed in that way. We, Of course, we got to witness, you know, some geniuses at work, mm. like Paul Verhoeven or even mm. Brian Singer or a lot of Dutch directors that are great. Mm. And so Alex van Warmerdam or Nanook Leopold, these are all great directors. And I think that's the best film school you can ever, ever, ever had. And I was always, I think, taking mental notes and, you know, just mm. watching the way they would, uh, you know, ex exercise their craft. So, but I did, I just think preparation is everything. And Carice and I both did that with this movie. We prepared insanely well. We, the, the whole script writing process took a couple of years. We got Carice and Marwan involved. Of course, Carice was involved mm. from, from, but Marwan got involved very fast as well. So we did readings all the time. And then we went back writing again so we were very fortunate that we could do this slow cooking of course funded also by the government process and i think yeah i think for both of us we really prepared in a different way than just showing up and being like oh you right. know it, I mean, it wasn't just a gig yeah no it was like no and yeah. therefore also because we were so in control it, it it just gave us so much pleasure i mean i cannot remember the last time i i actually went to work uh, with a smile on my face, even though the the, the topic was pretty right. dark. The, the work, the work that you went to so do happy. was tough, but the the spirit I, of the work. Yeah, was, but I was just so happy, and to do it with yeah. her, like I mean, it was just a dream. Really. I think also for Carissa, but also for me, being more in control is of course uh, very rewarding. You know, I mean, we both are for a lot of directors. We we were the muse. You know, we were this yeah. particular female muse kind of person yeah. and that is great and you learn everything but it also at a, a certain point you become almost aggressive because it's a just, rebel yeah you yeah. become a rebel and then you yeah. become bored and you become and it seems you become spoiled and so it, we were so hungry for this yeah. and uh yeah and we cannot also, wait to, to do it again yeah. also in terms of like nudity we, we really set a dogma for ourselves in the beginning mm. like we're not going to show any nudity here no, no female it. nudity exactly what? no okay nudity. Why, why was that? Let's talk about that a little because it's a really interesting thing you just said. No, because I think both of us in different ways, because I worked with Evil on stage and she in Game of Thrones and all their other experience, but also almost every movie we were in, we were naked. Yeah. You know, it was part of, it seemed to be completely like, uh, yeah, of course you're going to be naked. Yeah. You know, you didn't even question it. You didn't even, we didn't even think it. We were like, yeah, that's apparently that comes with the job. And then... Mm. Of course, after Me Too, when, when a lot of people woke up, as we, we as well, we mm. started to look at it in a different way. We're not against it at all. We think it's part of art, it's right. beautiful. But for us, if we create something, especially this is this is about sex, this is about, you know, uh, sexuality and power. So we, so we so we didn't want to objectify uh, women in that way. We want to objectify men. <laughs> so we took Marvel and we tried to objectify him in this in this film. I hope you enjoy this. <laughs> So we really we said no nipples, no pubic hair, you know, right. female, no none of that. that and then we said no more. And for the one scene where um Marwan in the end, when he's dragged off of her, you know, by yeah. the guard, uh, I wanted to show his whole body there. Yeah. But that and Marwan is super open to that and he's but but they the the, the People in power were afraid of that. So wow. just, just so that's isn't that an amazing thing? Something. Yeah, because we've been naked full time for twenty years, Absolutely. and then we want to create this small Dutch art house movie, yeah. and we want one shot of male nudity, and people are like, no, wow, that's not a good idea. Wow. So I think I that's think interesting. it's interesting. Matter, but interesting. Uh, I, I, I'm I, I'm not going to ask you which powers that be that that prevented that, but um, I'll tell you later. I'll yeah. tell you later. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, speaking of Marwan, I mean, he is his character is uh, it's, it's like a an equally complex character, 
to, um, to, to, to balance the complexity of, of Carissa's character. I've had a question that came in from, uh, from our Facebook live feed. Nicola, should we feel sorry for him is the question. Mm, well, it's a really good question, by the way. I think, so in my mind, they're both broken. They're both as, they are much more similar than we think, although she's on one side of the, of the fence and he's on the other side. Uh, they are much more alike. They are both, they have similar backgrounds as far as abuse. In my, uh, for every audience mm. member, they can make up themselves, but for me. And so I think they are very similar. So of course we are playing even with that sentiment in the audience or in the viewer, uh, the, where you are going to feel sorry for him. Like yeah. I, the direction we gave him a lot was just make it very believable, act very small. Don't, don't be Jack Nicholson in Shining or whatever mm. psychopath comes to mind. Don't go into that archetype, be this, almost this lost boy, you know, who's, because that is much more dangerous. It's much more manipulative. It is much more much real. More frightening. Yeah. Much more frightening and much more how real narcissists or real yeah. pets behave in real life. You know, yeah. they don't, they don't come at you like, ah, because if they would, you would, it would be easy. You know, it's, it, why is it so seductive? Because they don't, they, they're not like, ah, they're not, not like that. No, so. I, I, his performance is extraordinary in, 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 you know, as the balance because there are just moments where you catch yourself going like, I kind of get it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah exactly. And, yeah, you want to seduce the audience as well. Yeah. Her, but yeah, the yeah, audience yeah. should also become confused and, and see how attractive that badness and that danger, because he has that also as a real man. He has some... He's very masculine. He has, you know, he doesn't have to act all of that. He can just sit there and there's already an energy exactly. in the room. Yeah. We, of course, we, we use that in this yeah. film. Carice, you're, you're so raw in this film and so many scenes. Um, you gave everything I can imagine that, that there was, you brought everything to, to the moment of, of, of the film, but also some of the more complex scenes. But I mean, there are the obvious ones, which I think we, we all, we, we know what, what they are, but there's one of my particular favorite scenes where there's a, 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 a real complexity that is also beautiful and puzzling. It's the scene in the dunes where she follows, um, where, where she, 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 you're, she's walking into the dunes and it's kind of at that moment surrendering somehow. And this, the, the intimacy of the moment with his urine, you know, it's like, the, was there, a, for me, that, that's a particularly complex scene to play because it, it doesn't have the obviousness of, of something that's very physical that's happening between them. It's, it's an emotional intimacy that's happening. Um, was there a particular moment in the film that you recall like that, that was the thing that you think, okay, whew, this is the day I'm going to do that? <laughs> uh, first, I mean, always the first day is, is, is like that. I mean, it's always where you feel like this is your first day of school and I have to sort of make my new friends and sort of be, you know, you're sort of not really yourself. And, 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 and I, anyway, I hate first days of shooting because I basically wanted to have any other job than to be an actress. And also I wanted to impress her. I just wanted to, <laughs> I, just wanted to I just wanted to not leave her a lot. I just thought I need to man up and I, and, and it was a, Tricky scene because it was the scene where she's in the isolation cell in the very beginning. Yeah, the opening. The really opening. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I just thought I have to because I, I know how she works. I've seen her on in theater. I've mm. been a big fan, fan of hers forever. So yeah. I just thought I can't just you know do it eighty five percent. We're not phoning this one in. No. <laughs> no. 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 I have to go all the way, yeah. and that also set the tone for me. And uh, and. Uh, so that was a tricky moment, um, but where I really felt like I, need to, I needed to, to uh, prove myself. Uh, and I immediately tore my, uh, that's where you feel, I see that I have no technique whatsoever because my, my voice was gone like <laughs> after day one. But, uh, um, but, but, but apart from that, I mean, the obvious scenes, yes, but I think for me also the challenge was to, to uh, portray uh, a psychologist, a believable psychologist, mm. because I, I also felt like, a, a, am I that person? Are, are people going to believe that I'm actually mm. um, a psychologist? I felt like, and it's tricky in the in the, the scenes where there's nothing, where you can cannot hide behind anything. Yeah. You're just in a room with two mm. people and it's just talking and looking. Mm. And that's where you can go completely wrong direction. So that that's really sort of miniature painting. And that's what I really Tiny like. detail, yeah. 
Yes, and that's also what I what I enjoy. So I love I loved it when I was doing things and I heard Helena either laughing or just acting with laughing me. Laughing through so. the tape. <laughs> because I can't stop if she does something. I love it so much. I'm like, ah! then I'm like, oh no, it's it's not the theater. I mean, it's how much? It's the best, it's okay. the best thing for for an actor where you feel like your director completely <laughs> sees what you're doing, and mm. you know, and then and then you speak the same language, and that's yeah. just yeah. great. It, it, that's that's a very I got a really safe feeling. Yeah, we well, we I think the viewers of the film have you know have that gift of of that safety and trust because it allows you to go even further. Um, there's something you know. What was the research that you did, both of you, in terms of the writing and and developing the character? Just because I know one of the questions that came up after the screening we had here on Monday is like, is this real? Does this happen? What tell us a little bit about? how you research the reality of this world and these characters, because it's not just one person. Well, I think these prisons are pretty unique. So we have prisons in Holland where uh, it's from uh, the past that we were a pretty social country, you know, socialist and the idea that you can rehabilitate any criminal. Uh, and so if a criminal uh, pleads like he, he was insane during a crime or he, you know, he didn't have free will in that sense, then he can go in these kind of particular prisons where you get full treatment. So you get, mm. you get uh, music therapy, you get all kinds of therapy and they try to rehabilitate you. The other side of that is that the therapist is, is like God because the therapist can, it's not like you have a limited amount of time there. Mm. You can stay there forever and ever until you die, mm. whether the therapist says you are ready to go back into society or not. Wow. So that is the downside of this whole beautiful- They hold the key. It wow. totally holds the key. So you are basically, your life is in the hands of the, the therapist and the whole team and of course the government. And so these prisons are very uh, controversial in Holland. And we, in our research, our writer is, is very much into research. So she read everything about these kind of prisons that exist. But also we went into one. Uh, Carice joined uh, us and it was very intense. And of course these, <laughs> these inmates, <laughs> we were like really happy that we came to visit them. And then they recognized her from Game of Thrones and it was like... <laughs> We were a little bit afraid. It's that funny we, because we had like really fun talks and then we walked away and yeah. we were like, what did they yeah. do? And they're like, oh, they killed yeah. two people. Yeah. Wow. You know, there was one woman in this male prison, <laughs> one woman that I was very, I really loved her. And I yeah. went into this and I was like, lady. Lady. yeah, I didn't want to stop talking to her. And then it turns out that she really committed a horrendous murder. Oh. And so, so we came into this room where they were all doing these kind of crafts with wood and they even had like saws and stuff. And we were like, huh? and we just asked them like, yeah. is that a good idea? You can tell, you can tell. And who's, no. this, who's, who's working there. No, there's, right. there's no difference. No, so we, and we talked of course also to therapists. And I mean, this is a, quite a common thing. We didn't tell the people uh, at that point what we were doing exactly because we felt that they might not let us in. Right. So, I hope they're not too angry, but we did say it was about power struggles. And right. yeah, I think there's so much um, research material. So it and is very much based on, we checked everything, you know, based and, on- uh, And I still uh, get messages from people that actually yeah. work in that field and they yeah. say, oh, this happens all the time. Thank you for, oh, for wow. showing this because it does it does happen more often than, than, not, than, than you think. Yes. Yeah, I, I love that movies like yours, a film like this opens a window on something that we wouldn't otherwise have access to. So, you know, thanks for that. Um, I've had another question that came in and it's interesting. It's like with the complexity of this material and the film, was there some critical feedback that you received before the, fit, the film was finished that maybe you ignored or was there something that you had conflicts about with sort of the power structure around making a film that... Ah. Oh ja, wat was het gevaar? Of we een probleem hebben gehad met, met, met bepaalde mensen, denk ik. So in, in create, you mean in like the process of getting yeah, it? Yeah, something, you know, some advice you were given that you didn't like the sound of and just ignored it. I do think, I do think that we had quite some struggles. I mean, in general with Man Up and, and, and being taken seriously was, was for us was quite a struggle, but we had a great producer, Frans van Gestel, who who is very well respected and has yeah. such a history with the film fund. And when the, whenever they would be a little bit like, which is also good that they were like that, right? Because of course not any, whatever famous actress who walks in that door, famous right. of course. <laughs> so it's good that we, 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 we had to prove ourselves and rightly so. But we had this wonderful producer who really, you know, who was there like uh, fighting for us and with us. But of course you encounter all kinds of moments, especially as actresses, because that's what we were 
where you really have to stand for what you want and mm. you sort of have to you know put away your muse uh, kind of profession yeah. where you where you're so conditioned to say yes off. anything exactly because if you want to be a good actress you need to be a yes person you know you of need course. to be like because otherwise if you say no it's going to be it's not it's going to interfere with your flow mm. so as a director you much more have to be like a bird flying over everything and seeing and having a helicopter view. But so there were a lot of moments that were difficult, but in the end it's of course also great to have each other and to have that friendship. And I can always call her even in the editing when I had like a discussion with the producers and the editor, I was, I locked myself in the bathroom. I could always call her, you know, like, oh, then well, what should a I specific, do? Uh, a specific uh, example here about the, the scene with the dog. Yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah, the scene with the dog. Oh, and yeah. I mean, the, maybe they yeah, were the right. Black dog, but, yeah. Yeah, everybody wanted to get that scene out of the film, and even though, oh, even though they do. might be right, yeah, even though they might Sorry. have been right, I still wanted the dog to be there because for me it's such an intuitive moment. It's a moment where I think love, you know, her her sort of normalcy disappears and she becomes completely obsessed. And yeah. obsession for me is psychosis. So that's yeah. when you start to see things that aren't there. But of course, I understand the criticism. But at that point, I locked myself up in the bathroom. I was like, oh, they want me to get rid of the dog. And this is really like, you have to get rid of the dog. And then I was like, no, I'm not going to get rid of the dog. And that was because she supported me. Right. I'm going to move a little. So, so uh, you know, having her by my side is just, that's the, the, the most important gift ever. No, and we, yeah, as I said, we can feel it through the whole film. Sorry, we're, we're interrupting your next meeting. I've, I know we're, we're running it. It doesn't matter. Time. We'll just, no, it's great. We can continue. Um, we'll bring it to my roof terrace okay. so they can sit outside. Lovely. <laughs> I was just, I just, we, we do need to wind up anyway so I can let you go. But um, for Manor. Well, we can do for, a question from the audience if someone has a question. If yeah, you want. we've got a couple more questions here. One of them was, um, Working with someone you know so well, yeah, um, was there difficult? Was there anything difficult about that, especially with the kind of material that Instinct presented you? Um, yeah, because what is difficult about working with, because both of them are really dear friends of mine, Marvan and Cloise. Mm. So what is what was for me the most difficult moment in that was the first day of casting. So Carice and I were there and the, we had to go to the casting agency to find the other roles, right? So she was there to, to do the scenes with the, with the possible uh, younger actors or whatever actors. Yeah. And that was the weirdest moment because that was the first time I actually had to direct her as well, right? Right. And I remember we, we just laughed for, I think, 20 minutes full, like just laughed, like with, with the two of us. <laughs> We were like, okay, so now I'm going to play the director and you're going to play the actress. And then after we really started, the casting person walked in and the actress walked in. It was it was total surrender. Right, and, we and got that out of our system. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But it was so weird. It was such a weird moment. And I think, I mean, I really have to say, like she just told you her first shooting that she surrendered to me completely. And of course, that is, I mean, I get almost emotional talking about it. That is the be most beautiful present she she will ever give me. Yeah. Well, I know that both of you have surrendered to other directors, so it's beautiful that you can now give that gift to each other. And I know, and, and yeah, it feels it's so empowering. Yes, yeah. and 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 also, I mean, I think if you ask us what is the what what is the most beautiful part of this whole journey, I think it just the fact that we were in Toronto. Well, you were there every step of the way, yeah. Martin. We went in Toronto, all over the world. People reacted to this film sometimes very angry, sometimes yeah. very emotional, but never indifferent. Yeah. You know, it always uh, touched people's hearts. And I don't think that is our, that, that we did that. We did that, that. This is something that is a whole group, of course, a whole team, blah, blah, blah. And also the, the timing is right. And I yeah. think that is what we want to do. We want to touch people. We want to give them comfort and we want to provoke thought, you know? Well, you've, you've done that. And just to wind up now that Carice is back and I'll, I'll let you go on to your next meeting, just, just, um, yeah, just tell us about the thing that's exciting you both most. You know, the thing that Man Up and the two of you are planning to, to work on next. Something, you don't have to give us the detail or the, even the title of the project. Just something that thrills you about the next project you're working on. Well, we're working on, there's no secret, on a book. It's called The High Nest. It's about two sisters, Jewish sisters in, in World War II who also joined the resistance. It's a beautiful story and very contemporary in our eyes yeah. so we're going to work on that together and we have multiple new ideas 
And yeah, we're, we're I mean, it's a matter of how we're going to logistically work it out. Yes. Right. But it's very exciting, everything yeah. that's in the pipeline. But I would also love, I mean, even talking about Instinct today with all of you, I mean, I think my uh, motivation to do another movie with her that's contemporary, that's small, mm -hmm. you know, where we can move fast, where, you know, we can work around COVID rules. I mean, that would be a dream for me as well. So I hope we can do that soon. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait for you both to make a new movie together. And, you know, this is the time where resistance is really necessary. So the contemporary resistance story, I think, is, is super cool. But if you manage to make something really tight, Soon, fast, let's get you out here as soon as possible in person. Oh, yes, please. Yes, yes please. And, th and thank you so much for having us, Martin. Yeah. And you've meant everything for us, for our company, for the movie. We owe everything to you. So thank you so much for that. <laughs> no, you're too kind. But it's just lovely that you're here to talk with us. And thank you so much again for the beautiful film. Thank you. Thank everybody thank you. for watching and taking thank the time. You. Bye. 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 Bye.